right, well, um, this is a landscape that is pretty flat, um, but dotted across it are these hills uh, with dolerite, which is a, a, an intrusive rock that has weathered into these extraordinary shapes. Um, and so, to begin with, in terms of, of landscape, uh, these are, are remarkable places um, that we find are marked with rock art. Um, in, on quite a lot of these little hills or kopis, as they're called locally, um, one finds evidence of where people have been living. So there's a lot of uh, debris in terms of stone tools, uh, ostrich eggshell pieces, uh, sometimes bits of bone have survived, um, and various other artifacts, little ostrich eggshell beads as well. Um, so clearly these are, are places that, that uh, were of sig significance. Uh, there are references to these hills with these dolerite, these shiny dolerite uh, rocks on the tops uh, being re uh, referred to as uh, what, what they, they call brink corp, which we think means blink corp, which is shiny. Uh, shininess seems to have been something that, uh, that, that has appealed, in fact, in, in many contexts, but not least here in uh, the later Stone Age past. What is most intriguing about this particular landscape, of course, is that we have the, the, the testimony, the, the stories that were written down in the 1870s, uh, and echoes of which we have up into the present as well, um, but where some of the stories actually describe these landscape features uh, in, in, uh, in mythical terms. Uh, there's a, a famous uh, ridge of hills to the south of here called the Strandberg. There's a, there's a story telling of, of how an Agama lizard was moving across the landscape um, and uh, had its back broken in half and it became the hill. Um, so one, one has a sense of how these, these hills took on um, mythical and, and uh, uh, anthropomorphic uh, qualities. So in a sense, um, it, it's an animated landscape. The overarching context of these ideas and these beliefs, uh, these ways of living, uh, was animism, um, where the entire landscape is is alive in, in, in many different ways. And if you if you live in this kind of landscape through the seasons, one sees it changing, and it it, it is literally a, a, a live thing. Um, and people were relating to it, and they believed that the landscape in turn was responding to them, um, and. Uh, so one, one certainly has this sense of, of hills um, often being associated with animals um, which were obviously important in their lives. Um, it's a truism that animals are good to think with. Um, and uh, so uh, an interesting feature of, of the, the, the contemporary 21st century landscape is that many of the farm names uh, we we think, and we have proof of it in a few cases, um, are derived from much earlier um, Khoisan names. And many of those names refer to animal features like Olifant's Kop, which is elephant's head, um, Yelant's Ruch, the back of an Yelant, and so on. Um, so one, one has surviving evidence of, of that way of thinking about landscape in the past.